Hi everybody. Uh, we're not looking at this fish for any reason in particular. It just happened to be out and looking right at me, so I figured we'd start filming by looking back at him. It's my Crenocyclo Compressiceps from a dwarf green pike cichlid. Really, really cool fish. Uh, this is my angelfish tank. And again, we're not looking at it for any particular reason. This video is going to be about phosphates in your planted tank. Um, I shoot a lot of video where I talk about nitrates, but I very seldom even mention phosphates. And I had a viewer uh, who has recently switched from uh, reef tanks to freshwater planted. And in the world of reef tanks, phosphates are a very, very real concern, especially, you know, with the corals and everything. In the freshwater community, phosphates are barely ever mentioned, and there's a reason they're barely ever mentioned, and that's because they don't really have any impact on your tank. Um, and when I say impact on your tank, I guess I should be saying impact on your fish. Um, the, the nitrates themselves, I might have a slightly controversial point of view when it comes to the nitrates because I tend to downplay how dangerous they are to the health of your animals. Well, nobody can argue with me when I say that there is zero health risk when it comes to phosphates and the health of your animals. You can have all the phosphates you want. They have no impact on your animals at all. The only thing they will actually impact is the growth rate of the plants and the unwanted plants, more importantly, in your tank. The algaes and the cyanobacteria, the stuff that will use up the phos or the nitrates in your tank for, for growth, you know, the plants, will also use up the phosphates for growth. If you're familiar with your, um, you know, household plant food or your yard fertilizer, you will see that three numbers on the front. It's referred to as the NPK number. Well, the NPK number is the nitrates, the potassium, and the phosphates. So nitrates and phosphates go hand in hand with plant growth. The reason we don't really worry about the phosphates in our aquarium is, as I've said, the phosphates have no health risk whatsoever to your animals. The um, nitrates do. Again, there's some question as to the exact amount of health risks, etc., but there are known health risks to nitrates in your aquarium. So those are something that get talked about, and those are something that get uh, measured for on a fairly regular basis, and you really do have to keep your eye on them. But that's the key. That's the important part. You will often hear me refer in my videos where I'm talking about nitrates, you'll hear me refer to the nitrates as being a proxy that allows you to check other things. Well, we do have the ability to check for phosphates very easily, but we usually don't bother because the nitrates are a good proxy. As the nitrates rise in your tank, so do all of these other organics, including the phosphates. And if you've gotten to the point where you're having issues with too many phosphates in your tank, you're already having issues with too many, way many other things in your tank, chiefly nitrates. If you've got too many phosphates in your tank, but you don't have too many nitrates or other organics, then you're doing something really, really strange in your tank to get the phosphates to elevate like that while other things don't. So the long and short of it is all you've really got to do is pay attention to your nitrates and that will give you a good proxy to your phosphates. So let's go over and look at my phosphate test. This actually gives me a reason to use the test that I basically wasted my money buying because I never bother to use it. Uh, but let's go over and have a look. We're going to actually use my 29 gallon miscellaneous. If there's ever a tank where I need to say, hey, let's go look at one of my tanks that I never do water changes on. Uh, this is a good one to pick because I seldom do. And again, you know, with me, seldom doing water changes means once every few weeks, uh, I'll get in there and do a pretty big one. Other than that, I don't really worry too much about them. So we have had time now for the colors and the tests I've been letting bloom to bloom. So we are going to go in the other room. We're going to have a look at the test results, and we're going to see what the phosphates in this tank compare to the nitrates. So if you're a former reefer, get ready to see some numbers that are going to scare you. All right, everybody, here we go. That blue is so crazy blue in that vial, I can't believe it. I've tested some of my tanks before, and I usually came out around one to two parts per million. It was definitely blue. You know, I was coming in somewhere around here. But I've never tested one of my, quote, dirtier tanks and seen what the nitrates, or I'm sorry, the phosphates in that look. So you can see that is blue. I mean, we are at least up to the top end of this chart at 10 parts per million. So again, in a reef tank, that would be a dead reef. Um, but you can see the nitrates in that tank. I know these never turn out right on the vial, but I'm going to call that, you know, about 40 parts per million. It's red. It's definitely time to do a water change in that tank, but it's not bright red. It's not scary. 
Uh, at least it's not scary to me. That's that's not an issue. That tank's been way, way worse than that many, many times over the years. But the important thing is the phosphates. If you look at the phosphates, I've got huge phosphates in this tank. They should be down around one or two parts per million, I'm imagining. Uh, but let's go back over and we will look at the tank these came from and you will see what a tank full of nitrates and phosphates looks like. So here we are back at the 29 miscellaneous. Like I said, this is the tank we just took those tests from. So I've got about 40 to 50 parts per million nitrates and I've got phosphates that were up off the top end of that scale at least at 10 parts per million phosphates, which again is a lot for phosphates. And you can see my tank is not overrun with algae, none of the fish are ill. Uh, again, with the fish, the phosphates make no difference whatsoever. I should be far more concerned about those nitrates and my, the health of my animals than I should be um, with the phosphates. Now, in my tank, especially in this tank, I have this Chinese, I'm sorry, this um, rubber lip pleco there. I was getting my algae eaters confused. And he is an off-walks grazer and goes around and just scours the surface of everything. So even if I do have additional growth based on the elevated phosphates and nitrates in this tank, they don't ever have time to accumulate because I have fish in there that actually live off of all of that off-walks or surface growth by that biofilm that grows in the tank. So if we look over at my 125, I've got a lot of otocinclus in here. It's the same way. I haven't tested my nitrates or my phosphates in this tank. Um, at least not recently. I've never tested the phosphates in this tank. But again, it's just for me, it would be simply a curiosity to get in here and test the phosphates because they don't really have any impact on the tank. If anything, I want phosphates to be in my tank to some degree because I do have a planted tank. You can't grow houseplants with sterile environment. They have to have phosphates. They have to have nitrates. They have to have potassium. Um, they need trace minerals, they need, they need trace metals, they need iron and zinc and cadmium and all the other things that plants need to grow, but they just need them in the proper proportions. And usually if you use your nitrates as a proxy, your phosphates will stay in proportion. The one thing you can do that will elevate phosphates uh, more so than the nitrates is by using these frozen um, fish treats, like the frozen... Um, worms uh, what's the word i'm looking for the blood worms the frozen blood worms or even the frozen veggie packs i've seen them they come with the, the vegetables all chopped up and they're frozen into these little ice cubes um they use guar gum as a um binding agent when they freeze it it's it gives it that sort of thick stickiness that that makes it easier to work with but while it's harmless to your fish it does blow the phosphates up in your tank so if you use them a lot you are going to have elevated phosphates but on the other hand if you're throwing a lot of high protein food like worms in your tank you're also going to have a lot of nitrates building up at the same time so once again we go right back to just use your nitrates as a proxy and simply just don't worry about phosphates in your tank if you've got a planted tank Look at your nitrates. Just consider your nitrates a, a good, you know, comparison or a proxy to whatever's going on with your phosphates and simply don't worry about your phosphates. There's no reason really uh, for us to discuss them in any more length than this. I'm just more or less trying to give you a look at this tank before the video wraps up. So that's about it. Any questions? And I will be happy to answer them if I can. If not, I'll let you know. Um, so go ahead and leave them down below. Hope this was helpful to somebody. And probably this is going to be the last time you hear me talk about phosphates for a while unless it's just a casual mention in passing. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're not already. I do a lot of videos off the cuff and spur of the moment like this. So if you're subscribed, you won't miss any of them. And hope to see you real soon on the next one. Thanks for watching. All right, everybody, that end of that video felt very unsatisfying, so I decided to add this little bonus footage at the end. I did a water change on the 29 miscellaneous. I took about seven gallons out, and the test in the back there is the pH. Uh, if you've been following along, you know that my tap water is now slightly different than my tank water, so I have to be careful on the size of the water changes I do now. I can't keep doing these massive water changes like I used to do. So that's the before and after on the pH. You can see they're close enough that I'm not concerned. Uh, the thing that did concern me was my statement about being off the chart on the color here. I've had experiences in the past with the red vial, and I always thought I had really red vials until I saw a video recently where somebody had a really red vial, and I realized my vials are not so bad after all. 
So I've got nothing to compare this blue to other than this chart, and apparently I'm not very good at matching it up. So I decided I would go ahead and do a water change, and then I would check the phosphates again and the nitrates and see if I made a significant difference. I did bring the nitrates down. Um, again, I know that comes out looking red, but it is still what I consider to be at the top end of orange. So we're probably about 30 uh, parts per million now. Again, I didn't knock it down a lot, but we are below 40 parts per million with the nitrates now. The phosphates, however, are easily at 5 or possibly even slightly lower than 5. So I really don't think I was off the chart. Again, it doesn't really matter because it's not harming my fish. Um, but just for accuracy's sake, I do not believe I was completely off the chart. I think I was closer to, you know, 7 or 8 parts per million uh, phosphates originally, and now we've got it down to 4 or 5 parts per million. So I don't like to end my videos on a pile of test vials. So let's go have one last look at the tank after a water change, and we'll see whether it made a difference or not. And there it is. Doesn't look a whole lot different. And it has literally been uh, less than 10 minutes, I would say. I pretty much finished up the water change, got everything packed up, ran my tests, and when the test finished blooming, I shot that segment of video, and now we're right back here. And in that short period of time, the tank already looks this calmed down and settled back in. So I don't get a lot of... Uh, disturbance in this tank you know usually when you do a big water change you'll have the bubbles all over everything and you'll have a bunch of detritus that's been kicked up for a while uh, in this case I just did about a seven gallon water change I did change the filters on it and that was it I've got the hang on the back so the filter change is no big deal and here we are back up and running pH didn't shift everything looks good so we will go ahead and call that a video I'll leave you with one last shot of my big male angelfish and as always I thank you for watching and I'll see you real soon on the next one